Sherry Riplogle here from Wax on Wednesdays, and I am super excited today to share with you how I use Stencil Girl stencils in my encaustic painting. And this is a three practice boards. I've already coated them with three coats of encaustic paint, white encaustic paint, and I label them on the back because these are my practice boards. And I like to write down exactly what pigments or what techniques I use to achieve a certain look. So this way, when I'm going back over, I have a whole vocabulary or library of techniques in my little practice boards and I can easily reference what I did to achieve that look by looking on my notes on the back of the board. So to get started here, I'm using uh, r and f oil paint sticks and these are oil paints in a stick form and I'll also be using some pan pastels which are soft pastels in the little containers there easy to use and very pigmented and the RNF sticks have a little bit of a skin on top of them so all you have to do is take a little paper towel or a towel and lift that little skin off and they are creamy and ready to go and I'm using the Akua a wiping cloth for this to apply the oil stick. You can use a variety of things. You can even use your finger, but I find that wiping cloth is super, super soft. So just cutting off a tiny little piece of that Akua wiping cloth for each color, just really, it goes on really smoothly. It doesn't pull up on the stencil at all. And I'm able to um, just sort of wrap it around my finger and and apply it through the stencil really neatly. And I uh, love to paint with my fingers anyway, so this works out really well for me. You can use a brush, you can use a makeup sponge, you can use a gloved hand, um, anything can, you can use a variety of materials to apply that oil stick through the stencil. And here I am fusing it every single layer of uh, pigment or wax that you add to your encaustic needs to be fused to the layer underneath for a permanent bond. I'm using when I'm fusing in the stencils like this, I only need to fuse it till it gets shiny, which we call fusing it to a glisten. And that means that the entire surface becomes just slightly shiny, and that means also that the pigment is now set into the wax. So here moving on, I'm going to do a different stencil. I'm going to do a different look on each piece and I like to work on three or four pieces at a time and that way I'm working very quickly and intuitively. These are all abstract paintings and so I like to change it up and when I see that I'm at a stop or a standstill on one of them I'll quickly move on to the next piece. And here I'm applying the pan pastels with just a simple makeup sponge directly onto the encaustic surface and I can blend the colors and shade right around that stencil as I go. And today I'm going to be showing multiple techniques for applying these stencils in encaustic painting. There's so many different ways that you can use stencils in encaustic and I hope to show just a few different looks that you can achieve, a few different ways that you can use them. And here is one of my absolute favorite ways of transferring a stencil on to the encaustic surface and that's using a gel plate. And here I'm using the pigment sticks directly on the gel surface and I just use a brayer to blend it all in. I can actually create colors or um, shading directly on that gel plate with just the brayer and adding more color from those pigment sticks and sort of create my own tones right there on the gel plate before I add the stencil. And this is just a great fun way to just transfer those now right onto the encaustic surface. And I, on larger paintings, I actually use these gel plates as almost like a brush, uh, applying that stencil directly onto the surface. On bigger paintings, it's a great fun. And I can use those tones. I can apply just certain areas of that gel plate. And you can see it's so flexible that you can use just different areas of the pattern. Here I'm just, it's almost like a ghost print. It's got a little bit of oil paint on it. I'm just going to see what comes out. And here I've got a little bit on the edge of that oil paint transferring directly on to the surface from the stencil. And I'm just going to fuse it all in with my torch. And again, I'm going to add another layer. I rarely clean my plates, but if I'm going to, if it's just really built up with color and um, I'm not going to use it, then I go ahead and just clean the plate with a little bit of baby oil. 
So the reason why these gel plates are so fun to play around with with the stencils is because there's so many different ways just using these two things that you can apply that stencil. So I can put the gel press plate on the board, I can put the board on the gel plate through the stencil, and there's just so many different ways to pull that transfer off. And again, pulling just different areas. I don't have to do the whole entire thing and I can just do just certain sections. And this is why I love, I love these stencils that have multiple little patterns on them and I can use um, different patterns here and there. Those are my absolute favorite stencils. And when I use stencils in my encaustic painting, I'm not necessarily looking for shape. I'm usually looking for line and mark and great pattern and also building up layer upon layer of great marks and pigment and pattern and being able to visually see back through the wax, the history of all of those layers that I've built up and I'm able to see all of the marks and pattern and stencils that I've used back through the history of the piece and the layers. And also, depending on the way you do these stencil transfers, you can get a very soft look, you can get a very uh, bold look. It just depends. There's multiple ways that you can do these transfers to achieve different looks. And here I'm just cleaning all that great oil paint off on a piece of copy paper so I can use it for later, um, not wasting any paint there. And I can use that, I can pull another print, I can use the stencil on that paper later on and make another painting that I can use in collage or something else in my encaustic painting. And here adding additional layers and again in those little sections of just little great sections of the stencil there and different making some different marks. And I love using the stencils in this way. I feel like I'm making little discoveries along the way and little patterns and marks and lines that I can get from different areas of the stencil and using also different areas of that plate. And fusing again and setting all of that pigment and wonderful pattern into the wax. And here back layering with the pan pastel directly through the stencil uh, blending all of the colors right through the stencil onto the encaustic surface. And just as when I'm using the gel plate, I'm just using little certain areas of each stencil and turning it and using just little bits and pieces of each one, which is, I, which is why I like these variety uh, stencils with lots of different uh, looks on them. This happens to be have lots of little florals, which is really pretty. And those makeup sponges are so soft that you can, and the encaustic surface is so smooth that it allows you to just blend all those colors right through the stencil on the surface. And right there you can blend colors, you can shade, you can create new colors, all right there through the stencil as you're working. Okay, and here's a completely different way that you can add a stencil to your encaustic painting, and that's using encaustic paint. So this encaustic paint is a, has a working temperature of about 180 degrees, so you're going to want to let it solidify for just a few seconds before you lift off the stencil for awesome texture and pattern. And here I'm applying just very light coats of this paint. The paint is very thick. It's wax, beeswax. 
with a pigmented, whatever pigment color that you choose. In this case, it's white. And it, I'm painting it on in very, very thin layers. And that way, it is not be, uh, too heavy on your stencil. So it's not going to tear your stencil. And I'm lifting it off very carefully once it solidifies. And I'm going to fuse that in right away. And again, I'm fusing it very lightly. I don't want to get rid of any of that texture or pattern that's been created there. So I'm fusing it just until it comes to a glisten. And I can use just bits and pieces of that stencil again to add some sort of create my own pattern and texture. And it gives such a depth. When you add the stencil in this way, it gives such a depth to that pattern. A really great look on encaustic. Here I'm just adding a clear layer to the other paintings just to sort of seal in that pigment. This is an optional layer but it does seal in that pigment all of that especially when you're using the oil stick it sort of seals in all that oil stick so you can continue to build on those layers. And you can see now after I fused it that it's not going to smudge or smear all that oil paint is sealed in and I'm ready to add as many layers as I like to this piece and I can completely change up the color palette I'm not going to create mud because I've sealed it with a clear layer in between all the other colors so I'm free to add uh, basically whatever colors that I want or I can completely change it up here I'm just adding gray and black and I just I just want to add another layer of pattern to this piece. And now that I've added this texture, I don't have to keep it the color that I painted on, which in this case is white. I can change the color. I'm just dipping in some pan pastel here and changing that raised texture to green. And then I'm deciding that I want to go even a step further than that and adding some darker green oil stick and pushing it down into all the crevices there and all the little nooks and crannies that that texture created. I can easily then go ahead and wipe this off with a paper towel and a little bit of vegetable oil to reveal all of the raised elements of that texture and then keep all of that green in the receding areas of the, of the texture of the piece. And of course I'm going to go ahead and fuse all of that in with the torch again. And here I'm using the makeup sponge applicator and the pan pastels to go ahead and shade in areas of that pattern created with the stencil. And this is kind of a fun thing too. You can change up the whole look of the piece by shading in the color. And on this particular piece, I'm going to show you some of the things that I do when I add um, the stencils as an underpainting and I carry it through uh, to an actual landscape or something like that. I love to have those stencils show through in certain areas. And so this little, um, this little exercise, I'm actually going to carry this one through to just a really quick abstract little landscape here using the pan pastels. And again, I'm layering with these pan pastels. I'm adding additional layers and then fusing in between every single layer.
So as you'll see when this piece is completed, you'll be able to see all of that wonderful pattern still in the skyline and in the water. I love creating my landscapes in this way. I feel it adds a lot of interest to the piece and a lot of depth. You can see all the history of the layers right back through uh, the wax itself. And I hope that you really enjoyed all of these techniques and use them in your future encaustic painting. And if you haven't given encaustic a try, I sure hope that you do. Happy creating.